Okay. So it's like we are on. Check out for notification. You have it? No? Not yet? Okay. Well, I hope you people are people are coming in already. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another day of. Uh, <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, as we are coming in, please go and share the message. Go and share the link. Let's all go share the link as we are coming in. Yes, please go share the link. And I invite your friends. Let's invite our friends. And let the journey begin. Let the journey begin. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, yesterday we spoke about the truth being universal. The universality of the of the of the all this series about truth. They are not so easy. These are complex stuff. But uh I'm believing God to help me to break them down and uh, into understandable bits and pieces. But no matter how good I am in breaking down, what I discover is that you all will still need to go listen as many times as possible. By the way, Mrs. Shonuka, isn't it today that's your marriage ceremony or what do you call it? Is that anniversary. anniversary? <laughs> Happy celebration. You want to Hello everybody down there in Ukraine. I mean back at home. We are here with uh, Mrs. Shorunke. Unfortunately, Dr. Dr. Shorunke is not here. But uh, I'm sure he's with us somewhere in, <laughs> in faith and in spirit. <laughs> but is it not 27 years now? 27 years ago, they formed a family. So that was a long time ago. And you can see how blessed that family is because we just know one of the two uh, seat of the family, and that one we're already calling her Carol Wise instead of Caroline. <laughs> and then the second son, they said, is just as magnificent, as brilliant, and as hardworking. And so God has blessed them, and uh, we would like to join and bless you as well, if you don't mind. So you want to pray for them? Yeah, you want to stretch forth your hand and pray? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the family of the Shorunkes. You have united them together for a purpose, for your purpose. And uh, they have been, you know, doing their best to serve you and to live a life that will glorify you in their personal lives and the lives of their children. Father, we are praying that you will keep on raising them up. You will keep on blessing them. You will keep on, you know, as, in, in fulfilling your purpose, both in their lives and in their individual lives as well and the lives of their children, and for them to have come uh, in close contact with this revelation and with this teaching and with this knowledge. Father, I know that you will even do greater things through them and in their lives. Everything they have witnessed and they have experienced so far be like nothing compared to the exploits that you will do and revealed through their lives. Father, bless this anniversary for them and bless their time together for the future and let your name keep on being glorified through them and in their lives. To the glory of your name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. 
Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary. You, do I have another ma- magazine? Yes. You have a, can you give me for them for me to give to them? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Is that the right one? So, greeting you and congratulating you. This is one of the greatest treasures anybody in the world could have. Not just people who know me, but because it's going to be historic. If you read the story and the narrations and the narratives that are here, you will discover that this is one of the greatest Christian exploits in the history of Christianity. But unfortunately, for most people who have lived such great lives, they did not document them. But we are living at a better time, and so we are able to document. So for this being documented, if you go through it, you will know that it's one of the greatest stories of exploit. It's something that you would like to leave for your children's children. You see the way I promote? I know. So it's something that you would like to leave for your children's children. Here you is, you know this you are seeing live yeah. and some of the stories and events you, you are even participants are participants yeah. of it so it's nothing like it nothing like it in fact it's it's a kind of situation whereby it could be said sell everything you have to to have to have gold this is good it's something that is worth selling everything else even if you are not going to read it just to keep it there or to open it for inspiration you know so my honors. Yeah. Up. Up. Yes, you want to speak? You, or you, when you are, if you are speaking, then I will have time to write the signature. That's the calculation. something i'm just going to briefly tell you when we came over when we were invited to come over to ukraine my husband had just had a stroke and he was paralyzed on one side and the doctor said you know this is the worst place ever worst stroke ever that they don't like to see and so when pastor sunday invited it invited us over to ukraine my husband worked so hard and um he was able to to walk and he recovered from the weakness on one side but still of course you would see that something had happened and I was thinking that maybe things would change I thought maybe one day he would say you know what I don't think I could go but he always told me every day he would tell me says I just see something we have to go I see something happen but as God will have it we have a Christian therapy walk with a cane but my husband said we'll pick up the cane on the day that we go to the airport so we stopped by to pick up the cane at three o'clock and the store was closed never heard of it before they usually Holy close Ghost. at five so here we are heading on to ukraine my husband was in pain in the plane but yet i could see a joy and expectation of him coming so we came we went back and after about a few weeks my husband came, I, I, I came back from outside my husband said look at me i'm walking i'm dancing i'm jumping (laughs) all of that weakness on that side left we returned back to the doctors for the conclusion and this was the conclusion they said we are doubting that you had a stroke oh We are doubting you had a stroke. We cannot prove that you had a stroke. Wow. You are free to live your life. As Jesus! You 
So I just want to say, God is good. No matter what happens, once you focus on doing his will for him, anything that comes your way, God will let you know that it will not stop you, that he will deliver you from that, or he will heal you from that for you to continue his work. I want to say thank you to my husband. I have been out here since March. We have never been apart this long. We travel together all the time. But because my husband understands the vision, understands the time, understands what's going on, he allowed me to come with so much joy, expectation, and excitement. And let me come from March to now. So I want to say thank you so much, honey. Real husband. Real he, man of God. Yes, and he told me that, you know, he and the Lord are having great fellowship. He can't wait for me to come back to show me all the things that God has been telling him. And I can't wait to come back too, honey, to tell you all the wonder thing, wonderful things that's been happening here. So thank you. Thank you very much, DSA family. I appreciate your love, your encouragement, and everything. And I thank God for this family. And of course, I want to thank the Adela Jeff family. I always think about them, not just Pastor Sunday and Pastor Bosse and the children, but I also think about the rest of the Adela Jeff family. I pray in the name of Jesus that they would, they, would, they would reach out to this inheritance that God has put in their family. That we be partakers of this great calling, of this great mission. That is my prayer for the family. So thank you so much. Yeah, Pastor Sunday. I don't, I don't see any Adelaide people on the platform, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a timely prayer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. But we are village boys. I mean, we are village pads. We are village, village people. We, we come from the same village, only we didn't know nearby village, you know, just walking distance. Two, two, one kilometer walking distance. You know, just, uh, I used to walk, yes, I used to walk, I, you know, I used to hawk my, my ogi pub across their village. And, and then, but in their own house, I couldn't get there, so I never got to meet her when I was younger. Uh, but she was never there, no, but still. But I couldn't get into the house because it's always with fences. And that, for instance, I could only hear all the music coming from there all the time. <laughs> they were always having party there. When I was younger, 30 years ago. <laughs> uh, but, you know, when I was calling them, I didn't even know. Because she, she had a, 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 last, a different, what do you call it? Knee name? Knee? Yeah, knee name, yeah. So her maiden name was different, yes. So I didn't even connect. It was when she mentioned her maiden name that I said, what? <laughs> That's my life. That's my village. That's my childhood. And I was always thinking that time, who are these? Who are these people over there? The father was extremely successful, hardworking, pioneer, one of the top uh, England trained in the 50s, the mother, all of them. And uh, they... That they were pioneers. They started the industry, different industries, and was so successful. So, um, uh, so small world, small world, small world. Anyway, here we are. Um, pa pa pa. What truth is? What truth is? And I've spoken about what truth is. And now I started talking about the characteristics of the truth. So whenever you hear the truth, how do you know if it's the truth or not? First of all, I've spoken to you about the fact that the first thing you need to look out for is what? Universality. Universality of truth. Is that truth universal enough to be applied to every race, every people, every nation, every place, and all time. All 
applicable. It has to be the same truth, no, no, no matter the time that has elapsed. By the way, I'm sorry. As I'm talking, I'm seeing a word of knowledge. Somebody, a lady, is probably you are having your menstruation, but you are losing a lot of blood, to just to cut it short. You are losing a lot of blood, this, even as I'm talking right now, and, uh, but God wants to heal you now. Because when God uh, reveals like that and shows like that, I don't even need to touch you. Just hear it, make a point, point, you know, a faith, release your faith. Oh, the person is doing it right now. And before we finish talking, it's going to cease. That, that blood flow is going to reduce. You are going to, you know, going to shrink. And it's going to be normal. And you are going to be whole. So in Jesus' name, we pray strength. We release truth of God into your body. And the truth of God is you are being healed by his stripes. In Jesus' name. Another person, I'm just seeing another person now. You have this interesting situation because what I'm seeing is that, is, you know, first of all, I, start, I, I saw that the thing is affecting your ear, but just as I was about to say, God is just telling me, it started around your cheek, your cheek area. So all this area side, right to, between your, from your, close to your neck area to your ear, so you have some, some, it's like, it's painful. It's like, it's uh, just uncomfortable. You can't shoo from that side properly. And it's, yeah, you know what it is. So just, you know, touch yourself if you want. Yeah, or, you know, or just believe God for it. Receive it. And, yeah, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we spoke about the first characteristic of truth, which is the truth has to be universal before it could be regarded as truth. If it's not universal, it's not truth. So, anything that they are practicing in your church, or anything that they are teaching you about God, about the Bible, about life, if it cannot be practiced everywhere, from somebody. And while I'm saying this, let me remember to say, you remember yesterday I spoke about drinking? Now, I was making a point about truth. I'm not saying drink, I'm condoning drinking or smoking. I don't sanction smoke. In our church, we don't even use uh, wine to do Holy Communion. We don't even use wine. That's how strong we are against alcohol. Because we have a lot of former alcohols in our church. So we, don't, so we don't drink. I don't drink. I never drank. So and we don't even recognize it. But still, if we are going to take the position that it is a sin, like some people just to drink something like that, I'm not saying to be drunk. In the Bible, drunkenness is a sin. But to drink is not a sin. But it's not that it's not a sin. It's not bad. Maybe it's bad because it could lead to different problems. But I'm just talking about truth. We say we, we are going to talk about I'm sorry. But I'm not using that as an excuse. I'm not condoning it. I don't even believe in the small sipping of it. But people who do it, I will not condemn them. You know, I'm not going to say it's all right to do. So I just want to make that clear because I read in the commentary. Some people are saying, do you mean drinking and smoking is glorifying God? No, I, I don't mean you should smoke. Get me right. When I'm talking like that, I'm not sanctioning. I'm just making my point. I, we don't, I don't smoke. I never smoked. I, I don't recommend people to smoke. I'm just saying sugar is as bad as smoking. The, the, only, thing that, the only reason why we say don't smoke is because your body is a temple of Christ, yeah, is the temple of God. So we don't want to defile it. Now, do you think it's only by smoking you defile it? Where did you even get that from? Did you see smoking in the Bible? You would not see it. Written over a thousand years ago. So, so for you to say 
you know, he's smoking. No, actually, it was discovered 400 years ago. But still, the Bible had been written because it was discovered. <laughs> so for you now to say, uh, it's, you know, that's just the only way you defy the body, there are different other ways that we defy the body. So, of course, but that doesn't mean I'm agreeing or I'm condoning smoking, okay? I want you two people to get that right, okay? So I just wanted to clarify that because sometimes, oh, wow. Apiat Gavariash to Golos. Uh -huh. Okay, so apart from, uh, so what are the other characteristics that make truth truth? apart from universality. The other characteristic that makes truth or that qualifies truth to be truth is absolutism. Or truth has to be absolute for it to be truth. For, the, for truth to be regarded or accepted as the truth, it must be, uh, uh, it must be absolute. Now, the absolutism of the truth is totally different from uni universality of, of, of the truth. Uni uni universal, the, the universal nature of truth is different from the absolute nature of truth. So what is tr truth being an But the absolutism of truth, it means that that stands as direct opposite of relat rel relativism of truth. Mm -hmm. Now, what we normally hear right now or in our world is that truth is relative. Mm -hmm. And when Mr. Obi was talking yesterday, he said he tried to study the truth after he started preaching about it and uh, that he, he tried to research and do studies in English and that the only thing he was finding was Truth is relative, truth is relative, truth is relative. Nothing to find in the internet, in Google. Just, uh, and then maybe you find the argument about is it opposite, some people, is it absolute or is it relative? So that, there's nothing. So, but in Russian language, he got something. He got something that he showed us yesterday. Correct is different from being true. rather than in the relativism of truth. And I'm going to prove it. And I'm going to prove to you also that nobody really believes in relativism of truth. The only thing that makes people to believe that the truth is relative is because of self-gain, self-interest, and because of their sinful agenda. People just want to push, push their own sinful agenda, and they want to get certificate for it. They want to get authentication for it. And that's why they first of all have to go forward and say, hey, okay, everybody has their own... There is nothing that is absolute. So they needed to first of all destroy the foundation of truth, which is absolutism, and then come back and say, well, uh, you know, truth is not absolute anyway, so anybody can have his own opinion. So because they don't want to change their lifestyle, people just don't want to change. They don't want to change. They don't want to work on themselves, <laughs> and therefore... It's relative... That's, why, that's what made people to say, you are a woman, but to me, you are a man. So two men and women can live together. You are a man, but to me, you are a woman. Everything is relative. Or I'm a boy, but I said, no, I'm not a boy, I'm a girl. Everything is relative. So that's what relativity is mean. Because they want to engage and indulge in, in their ungodly practices. So, but let me now begin to prove to you that truth is actually absolute. And even they who are saying that they don't believe in the absolutism of the truth, really, they live every day on the absolutism of the truth. Every one of them practice absolutism of the truth. Number one, without absolutism of the truth, there would be no standards. 
words today because we have truth as absolute. For example, even these books you are seeing here, you know you need standards to produce them? Even your, my very clothes that I'm wearing, we need standards to produce them. Everything that is ours, you need standards to produce them. Uh, cars, you need standard. Standards are things that make you, that make life predictable. If there are no standards, if there is no truth, there will be no standard. If there is no standard, there is no predictability to life. So, for example, you could say, I want, I printed this, my book yesterday, so I want to print this one. Since there is no standard, they will just bring something out for me to be like this. Because there is no standard. House that I want. How can I have this house without a standard? I need measurement. I need equations. I need, this is the standard that I want. I want it to be this high. I want this table to be this high. I want the share to be this high to see this way. If there are no standards, the leg will be like this. The face will be, they will, it will not be flat. I cannot write. Because there are no standards. So how do we get standards? We get standards from mathematics. Standard, and that's why truth and mathematics and science cannot be divided. So how do we get standards? Yes. This is produced because of standards. And it was first produced as a prototype, as a model. Why do you always need a model? The model is the standard setter. This telephone you have right now, or iPhone, is only a repetition of the standard that was made. There will never be a repetition, a serial production, if there were no standards. Okay, what has happened is that what has happened is that you know, you have a machine. How these things are built. Just like car. You have a machine, a production line. Where you just, you have to have a fixed size and a fixed mm, let's say, shape. It has to be in the shape of this. So, uh, vast or uh, you know yeah yeah the the iron is just just been spread out you know and it's just producing this thing because of the standard so because of the standard you can repeat the original but because of the standard you can also multiply them and produce in thousands or millions multi multiple copies because thanks to the original that you had, you are able to repeat that original thanks to standard. And the standard is placed in the place where they, you put it and it's, you know, everything depends on standards. For example, this my shirt or your shirt or your bra blouse or whatever you are wearing you, is, is mass produced. And the reason it's mass produced is that somebody, first of all, How many inches? How many? Those are standards. And why, why, why is that standard coming from? That standard is coming from truth. From, again, 2 plus 2 equals 4. So because of 4, the, the, this one will be this particular size. 6 plus 6 is 12. To be 12, this will be 12. If there are no, if there are, there are no standards, there will be no mathematics. So can you imagine that there is no mathematics? There will be no cars. Can you imagine that there is no mathematics? There will be no technology. Can you imagine that there is no mathematics? There will be no computers. Can you imagine that there, is, there are no mathematics? There will be no telephone. There will be no computer. There will be no video. There will be no television. There will be nothing. And mathematics is... Plus 
two is always four. Four plus four is always eight. That is mathematics. It has to be based on the integrity of the truth. The absolutism. You cannot argue with it. Now, let's now say, everyone says, I have my own truth. Or in our own country, we are atheists. And because we are atheists, <laughs> we give you the freedom. We don't recognize mathematical equations that is established. So, in your own case, 2 plus 2 can be 4. In your own case, 2 plus 2 can be 16. In your own case, 2 plus 2 can be 8. In your own case, 2 plus 2 can be 20. And everything will just be conflicting. You will never come out with a standard. So, any nation that doesn't value truth will never be good in mathematics. You might be good in Between the theory of mathematics that you are doing in class and real productivity. Oh. <laughs> because you don't live it. Because you don't abide by it. Because you always, you know, if you don't believe in truth, you cannot. Because if you are dodgy, you could never produce in life. You can produce in classroom when they tell you this is the way it is. So you just go and repeat it. And but you in life, you will never be consistent. So for you to be able to function, I mean, for, for you to be able to have industrial revolution, that society must be very persistent and committed to the integrity of truth in mathematics, in physics, and in life. The same thing with medicine. They will never have breakthrough in medicine. You will never have Technolo the technological breakthrough in medicine because or leg or just anything because you've got to go to the lab laboratory and be have the intellectual integrity and commitment to the truth to sit down as many hours as possible and find out how that through the other the dead bodies or whatever the animal body how the joints are connected how the body functions, and you have to do the calculations. So 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8. If you put this together and you remove it, it always comes. That is intellectual, that is the, 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 inter, uh, the integrity of truth. You have, to be, you have to be consistent with that truth. If you miss one figure, one figure only one, one time only, you are not consistent, you are failed. Ill. The experiment will never work out. Nothing works without truth, my dear. And, and that truth is absolute. It cannot change its... Recognize. But mathematics, the, yes, it, they have to be faithful to it. They have to be truthful in the area of mathematics. Soviet Union, you know, they never recognized God or Satan. They never recognized anything. But they, are, they were the, one of the best in technology. Why? Because when it comes to truth, you have to be committed to truth. Because absolutism of the truth doesn't give anybody the chance otherwise. It's just like saying that you get to the car, you get to your car this you know, one day, any morning, you go to your own car, and you want to put off the car, you say, I'm not going to put on the car, and I'm not going to press the, I'm not going to even enter the car. I'm just going to sit down here and say, you know, car, go by yourself, and carry me and enter. To go. <laughs> you know, things like that don't work. It has to be the absolutism of uh, the, the way it's supposed to function. You've got to recognize it and you've got to follow it. So absolutism of the truth gives us standard. If you go to my country, Nigeria today and Africa, you don't see standard. For example, I was in a church one day. <laughs> you can't believe this. And I finished. This was a big hall. 5,000 church members. Church. I mean, I finished preaching. Then I needed to go upstairs on the third floor to go and meet with the pastor, I mean, with the pastor in his office. So, I mean, just like here, you have stairs, right? Staircase. So I started going. Ah! Then I said, it's not arithmetic because <laughs> I sprint on the first stair, I put my leg. Then the other one is too high. <laughs> ah! You know, staircases, they're supposed to be the same. You know why? The reason, I, I mean, so before I go from one first floor to second floor,
catastrophe. So I now ask the pastor, what is this? They say, ah, because if you want to get the... <laughs> if you want to get the, uh, the ones that are expensive, the ones who finish universities, and the ones who finish polytechnic, it, they will it they they be quoting money too much. So we got the local ones who just gauge it with their eyes. <laughs> So they gauge it with their eyes. <laughs> no measurement. <laughs> so when the weather is bad, those kind of houses just collapse. <laughs> and that's why T.B. Joshua building collapsed. And they are saying he's demon. He said he saw some, angel, some, uh, some planes flying. What plane? So on top and be here yeah, on, on earth collapse building they collapse because building is collapsing building is collapsing because of the flu on top and you are saying some demons or some forces it's because there's no standard that's what lack of standard does that's why building is built on mathematical equations computer is based the boot of math but with building you can still shit because at least you can still say it's standing but with computer, it will not even work in the first place. Yeah. With car, it will not even move in the first place. With clothes, you could see, I mean, in my own village where I come from, the tailors, they just look at you like this. They size you up. <laughs> and then you'll be wondering, why is it that this cloth is always... Uh -uh. No. <laughs> People might not know from the distance, but you is wearing the thing. <laughs> they might think you are looking okay from the distance. But you is wearing it, you'll be saying, ah. <laughs> you always have to manage. In my country, the word manage means something else. <laughs> It's not like administrative, you know. It's like just. <laughs> Manage means just let do. You just let do with it anyhow. You know why there is no electricity after? One uh, kilowatt of electricity is costing $2,000. You only need such amount of money to produce such you no know, gigabyte of something. But in my country, it will never meet. No, it never come matches. It, you know, why? Because there is no truth. So you are supposed to be, provide, uh, be producing 20 gigabytes. You didn't even produce one. Why? We would not it's supposed to, ah, but you say, but... This thing is supposed to be one kilowatt is supposed to be produced by this amount. And we release this amount of money. So where this is about where there is no truth, it doesn't match at all. Because somebody has is not there is no integrity of truth. There is no commitment to the truth. There is no absolutism of the truth. So if you want to build a country, if you want to, you know, reno, you know, build a culture or build a people, the one of the very first thing you need to emphasize is the absolutism of the truth. Standards must be maintained everywhere and in all things and that's why you are doing this training you are doing train the trainers why they are giving you standards because if they could give you the standards and you could follow you could follow through then you'll be able to produce the same result that i'm producing that he is producing why am i not worried coming here to con control what pastor derek is doing because i know that he's following the formula he's following the standard that is truth commitment to the truth if you commit to the same truth, you have the same result. That is what the concept of franchise is, is based on. Have you heard of franchises? And those are based on. For example, before I got this, my house, I had the modo. The
prototype. What do you call it? Model, Model yes. That's why it's based on. Everything is standard. Look at my button, for example. If you don't have standards, in my own, when I was going over, I never know they could be equal. They could be the same, the same length, like the Alcada. My own is just what we call in Russia, Preblizitetna. <laughs> so, how do you know where the next button after this one? Let's say you start from here. So, if the first one is here, how do I know when the next one is where? It has to be appro uh, approximate, yes. It's just approximately, you just gauge and try to. <laughs> and follow the rules. No rules. But to be, emit, to be exactly the same, ah, how good. That is why when Europeans came to Africa, they colonized us easily. <laughs> because we didn't have standards. <laughs> they just came with some standards. It finished. So if you are not consistent with standards, if you are not consistent with standards, if you are not consistent with truth, you can never be the society. Your road will, in fact, you will build a road like this and spend the amount of money people spend in Europe on it also. But in the next two years, it's about to be there for 15 years. In the next two years, it will be broken. Why? No standards. Everything suffers and collapses where there are no standards. What is standards? Truth. But not just truth, but absolutism of truth. What is standard? Science, commitment, and past, I mean, um, the integrity of truth is science. So when you go to church and pastors are telling you, uh, God will bless you today and you know you will you will never before you get home you will receive your miracle or you you know if it is truth it will be absolute for everybody or it will be absolute that at least that thing will happen absolutism of the truth but when you are just throwing out words like that uh okay you, you know you will never suffer this year you nobody will die in our church this year oh uh, how do you know first of all how do you know then if anybody dies there is no absolutism of the truth so why did you even say that you are supposed to answer for it and if it is an informed society an educated society you that church should be emptied the next year because there should be nobody in that church because there is no integrity of the truth there is no commitment there is no truth must be absolute so if you say for example i have had many pastors i mean the big pastors the ones they are worshiping every sunday you are telling people today is your day of deliverance today is the day that all your problems will be solved First of all, why do you even know my problem? God knows. Okay. But uh, did he tell you that today my problem will be solved? Are you sure he told you? Okay. If he told you about him, about him or about her, about her, are you sure he told you about every single person? He didn't say, so why did you come and open your mouth and say that? Because if it's not if it's happening for everybody, you have deceived me. There is no absolutism of the truth there. If you are just giving them hope and preaching faith, then you have to tell them that I'm just encouraging you to tell them the truth. <laughs> I'm just pumping you up. Oh. <laughs> if you pump... <laughs> I'm just trying to work out miracle. So... <laughs> So me, I know they give guarantee for you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> God will deliver or not deliver. I don't know. But the way we do it, our faith, these charismatic people, is that as if they have been informed from God himself that himself that it's going to happen. <laughs> oh. And then when it doesn't happen, they try and put the blame on you. Because there is, you know, they don't understand the concept of truth. Jesus Anytime Jesus said anything, ah, when he said, Your faith has made you whole. My baba, baku, gaga, 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 guru, guru, boko, baba. So, where are we getting our own concept from? 
When the 10, were they 10 or 11? Okay, the 10 lepers met with, because one came back. I thought maybe, <laughs> I said maybe they might be 11. <laughs> when the 10 lepers met Jesus, even though Jesus probably knew that only one would be grateful, yet he said, go and cleanse yourself. You will be cleansed. You, you are okay. Even though they were not good enough. They, were, they didn't deserve it. But because Jesus has said it, absolutism of the truth. All of them still got healed. Absolutism of the truth. The, uh, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. What do you want? He, didn't, he, was, he didn't even use big words. But anything he says, absolutism of the truth. That's why he said, don't run after miracles. Don't run after signs. Run after the truth. Preach the gospel. Preach the truth. Preach the kingdom. And let the word, let the truth, let the kingdom of God do the work. When they come and make, you know, open statements like anything that is after your success or after your something, the thing should be destroyed now or die or, and, and you see that nothing is changing. Are they just jokers? Truth is always absolute. If you don't know, if you are not sure, say, this is my opinion. Even Paul said that. When Paul was not sure, he said, it's not God, though. Yeah. Not the God they thought this one, no. it's me, oh. yeah. This one is my own opinion, it's not God. But today, do you not get pastors to admit that this is from me, oh, it's not from God. Everybody wants to be Superman. Yeah. <laughs> so, check the words that you are hearing from your pastors and your leaders on the absolutism of the truth. How absolute are the statements they are making? For example, somebody said, the Bible said, thou shalt not suffer the wish to live or something like that. I think that's it. Thou shalt not suffer the wish to live. So don't... Uh, live. But it's not serious. So if you are saying, suffer not the wish to live, so why are there still some living? If that is absolute truth for today, because that suffer not the wish to live is coming from that same Leviticus where it says eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. Yeah. So on the basis of that, a wish that is killing you should also be not suffer to live. On the fact that the, that was the Old Testament where tooth for tooth, eye for eye. But when Jesus came, you have had it said. Tooth for tooth. But from today on, it's cancelled. Love. You have had it said, eye for eye. But from today, give your enemy food to eat. Ah, ah. And now you are coming to quote that to me? Are you joking? Are you, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You think I'm a fool like some of those people following you? If it has been truth, you won't have had any wish left. Why are they not dying? Why are you not killing them? Okay, if you read, even the person who is saying he doesn't believe it, let me, let me tell you the truth. If he believes it, why is he not going about to say, okay, God has said, so far not them to live. Why is he not guarding Lama and, I mean, and uh, you know, God, you know, knife and cutlass? With going, if he really believes it, let him carry cutlass now. If he really believes it, let him go and they, they you know, the Bible said you should not let them live now. So let him go after them and let them live. But he doesn't believe it. It's just to get crowd. <laughs> All about it's just to get crowd. That's it. it. The word is not absolute. If it had been absolute, it would be, he himself would have committed himself to it absolutely. Yeah. 
So you find out what people say. Don't just follow. Especially th- there are these people that they call prophets. Okay, for example, somebody will come and tell you, this is your phone number. He mentions your phone number. And then he says, okay, let your owner of that phone number come forward. Okay, you came, you came forward. Okay, he said, somebody is trying to kill you. You know, somebody, something is going to happen to you. You have to sow this seed. God, you know, bring that money. God will save you from the person. Uh, or, you know, the person will die. What is, what is going to happen? Or they just say, uh, so who is the owner of this telephone? No, okay, the person comes and they begin to dance. Oh, then they lay hands on you. You fall down. So what has happened? So what is the sense in the... What, what is the sense? Okay, you have your, your underwear is green or yellow. Okay, it's green and yellow. So what's your problem? What is the essence of it? You want, you want to tell me that God wants to prove to me that he knows? I didn't doubt that before now. He knows everything. Or you want to prove to me that you are tough, you know? Okay, if you know, so what else? What happened? Why don't you go down the street and, you know, do that? Because if it is the truth, it's the absolute truth. It's just like saying people falling. Have you ever seen people falling? Benny Hinn and people like that? <laughs> Some, you know, people are so gullible. Okay, you come. Let's say, let's say I'm the, have you ever seen people like, yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. come, come, come. <laughs> he wants to catch you. So, passing by you or put his clothes or just do this or this or So how is he sleeping with his wife? That's what I want to know. <laughs> how is he sleeping with that wife? Is she unconscious all the time? Huh? Okay, but why is it that? Why? Because if that is true, if that is true, absolutism of the truth, it, why is it that when he goes from that stage and he's on his way to a restaurant, nobody falls in the restaurant? <laughs> How come he could see the restaurant and no, no waitress and waitress? How come they could start and give him food and it's alive? How come they are still standing? No absolutism of truth. Forget them. Forget them. <laughs> Manipulators of this world. You know, that there is something. So, why? How do you talk to your staff even? How do you talk to your mother? What happened to her? She collapsed? <laughs> well, you know, cameraman doesn't fall. And the, you know, what, what are you? The, the cameraman that is supposed to fix it and to shoot. Even if he falls, they will punish him later. Ah! You didn't shoot it. <laughs> If anything people around you are doing, if it's not absolute, they have deceived you. They have sold you a lie. And absolutism means if people are falling here, they must fall in other places too. If, it's fall, if they are falling here, they must fall in other places. It must apply everywhere. Then after you fall, finish, what happened? Ah, I'm dazed. So what, what, has your sickness gone? No, I don't know. So what, why did you fall? Who needs the show? Oh, he said, oh, he's gone, he's gone. Then two weeks later, you, get, you find out that he's dead. <laughs> he's gone and he died. <laughs> Absolutism of the truth. Absolutism of the truth. A lot of things that people do in churches, they don't stand any test. If you want to put it on the intellectual test and the test of truth, they don't stand. But with my Lord Jesus, everything stands. When he came before the Pharisees, 
he told them that they will see it. They said, give us a sign. He said, I will not give. He's not there to perform for or to impress anybody. He said, I speak you truth. Truth is more powerful than sign. I'm not going to give you sign. I'm going to give you truth. But whenever he needs to perform, he performs and everything comes. He said, how much, how much bread do you have? Oh, we only have uh, five pieces or two fishes of bread, of uh, fish. He said, okay, I'm going to perform. He fed everybody and had leftovers. Absolutism of the truth. Integrity of truth. What is absolutism? Absolutism of truth means that, uh, that, uh, that uh, whatever thing people are saying has to be unquestionable. Whatever people are saying has to be applicable. Especially if people are crediting God with it. I say it is God doing it or it is in the name of God. It has to be total, absolute, all the time. It means God has to back it up. Let me tell you another aspect of the absolutism of the truth. The Bible says, sanctify them with thy word because your word is the truth. So if the word of God is the truth, some people found a passage in Isaiah 33, I think, where it says, he is our king, he is our lawmaker, and it's our, what was the third one? It's our king, lawmaker, king, lawmaker, and what was the third one? Anyway, so on the basis of that, three arms of government were established. Can you, can you find it? In Isaiah, what did they say? 33, or just put through uh, king, lawmaker, and judge, yeah, and judge. Yeah, it's our, it's our, King, lawmaker, and judge. So those are on the, that is on the basis of that verse is how we have the three arms of government. The word of God. The king is the executive. The lawmaker is the legislative. And the judge is the judiciary. So, uh, and they discover that this, or this, each one of them is equal to the other. It's the same God, but divided into three pieces, and each piece is equal. So that's why we got equality before the law. Equality before the law means all these arms of God What is law? The law is the word. Is the truth. Now, if there is no system of absolute truth, because equality before the law means absolutism of truth. So anything that happens to anybody, we are all equally liable to the law. The, it's also called the dictatorship of the law or the absolutism of the law. So it means law which is the truth the law is the truth of the land is the law of the land is the order so if the law says this we have all it's a consensus we have consensus consensus we've all agreed that this is the constitution this is the law it means it becomes the absolute truth for everyone it's binding to everybody now any country that you see absolutism of the truth the system of law and equality before the law will never work. Because in a society where there is no respect for the absolutism of the truth, law will not work. Law will always change in accordance to who we are talking about or who is referred to. It is going to be relativism of the law instead of the absolutism of the law. So, a society is built 
only on truth and on absolutism of the truth. If there is no, if you want to build a society, first of all, iron now the question of the absolutism of the truth. And then make sure that your law is based on absolutism of the truth. What that means is that the law is exalted above any individual, even if you are the president. So that means the truth is above you. That is what absolutism of the truth is. The truth must be above anybody. And everybody must be equal before the truth. That is the picture of absolutism of the truth. So the absolutism of law that you hear, or, the, or equality before the law, is coming out from understanding God. That God and his truth are absolute. And because they are absolute, the law that must guide the society, for a society to function, and to function well, the law must be absolute and must be elevated above any individual's interest. And only when the truth and the law is above all and above everybody, and when everybody is equal before it, and, you know, and nobody is not changing, it's not relative, it's not changing from the rich can change it and bend it. That is why the countries where there is no absolutism of the truth, there will be no justice in that society. Because truth has been dethroned. There will be no equality in that society. And there will be no judicial system in that society. There will be no legislation. Nothing will work. And there will be no progress in that society. It's not just politically. Because that relativism in politics is going to mean relativism in relationship. So people are going to be listen, Mary, I please, people pleasers. Huh? Hypocritical. People salute to them, so they behave to you this way and behave to you this way. So truth doesn't matter. You can do the same thing and get punished. You do the same thing and get promoted. So, the basis of success, of growth, of development, and civilization is truth. If we say, no, relativism, and that's why I say, nobody truly believes in relativism of truth. Because they know it will not work. Can you, can you imagine now that America, Americans are the ones proposing relativism of the truth. Relative, oh, subjectivism, relativism. Why don't they put it in government? Or in industry? Or in economy? What, okay, have you seen the NASDAQ and the New York, what do they call it, stock market? When people are jumping and saying, oh, it's like this, like this. You know, you remember when the, the price is going up and down and everybody's jumping? Stock market. When, have you, if you seen that? If, just say, why don't you introduce relativism to the stock market? <laughs> the figures don't mean anything. Everybody can just write their own. Then you will not make profit. Everything collapses. Nothing will work. Why don't you make it into co in your cause, relativism? Everybody has his own idea in, the, in your factory. Has his own truth. No, nothing will be produced. If you put it in your society... That everybody has its own law, its own right. Everybody is right in its own, in its own way. I can come and rape your daughter or your, and your husband, I mean your, or your, father, your husband or your daughter or your wife, and kill them. But I say it's my own truth. I, everything is relative. It doesn't work. The truth is, upon, is what our whole society and universe is based on. So, countries where people have just copied physical ways of life. For example, in my country, we have the three arms of government too. But you know why? It's because everybody is telling them they should do democracy. And democracy must have the three arms of legislative, executive, judiciary, and just have them. People sitting down everywhere. But they don't believe in the... They don't even know. Don't, why believe? 
they don't even know as, what is on the basis of it. They just saw that it is, that's the way it is, this democratic structure is formed up. But they don't know the explanation even. They don't even know what is responsible for it. They don't even know that that is based on the principles of truth and the absolutism of truth. The reason why they have to be free and separate is because so all of them will be equal among each other so that none of them will abuse and say, okay, this works for me and doesn't work for you. So that they will control each other. No, it's equality before the law. So you cannot allow this one to misappropriate you. this one. So that power is not concentrated in the hand of one person. So that the power will be... It's all about absolutism of the law. <laughs> and so that if anyone will be... Will, you know, we regress, I mean, we digress and, uh, and um, violate the law so that they could all be, you know, called. But when you don't really believe it, you know, what really matters is not the system. What really matters is not the name you call it. What really matters is the integrity of the truth. What really matters is to believe in this absolutism of truth. So even if you don't have that democracy system, democratic system, but you put a structure, anyone you want, to make people to abide and to make people to know that truth is superior to them. I must bow before the truth. Somebody was telling me the other day that pastors, in the pastor's uh, world, we have what we call uh, collegiate uh, solidarism. Solidarity. So solidarity among pastors means everybody is living in a glass house. So you don't throw stone at each other. So that you, your own secret will not come out. But the truth is, the truth is more than me. The truth is more than my weakness. It doesn't matter if I am the one that is violating the law or that is doing anything. I myself must admit it. I myself must bow before truth. Everybody, the truth is above me. I might, even if I'm not perfect, I still must speak the truth as being perfect. I still must elevate. I still must point to the truth. Yes, I might fail, but the truth is integral. The truth is absolute. The truth is always right. And that's why when I fail, I get punished. Or when I fail, I suffer for it. I am ready to bear the consequence. Because the truth has to punish me just like it has to punish every other person. That is the absolutism of the truth. But for me to now try to have agreement with you and have agreement with you, uh, if I get anything wrong, uh, let's just agree about ourselves. To, feed, to defeat the truth. If you do that, then the truth will come back and punish you even the more. <laughs> Why? Because we cannot do anything against the truth, but for the truth. That's why we have a second chance with God. Where we have repentance and we have Christ so that you can always come to him and repent uh, uh, sincerely and get him to wash you in the blood. And, but you must admit the truth. You must admit to him that the truth is that I'm wrong. Go. I'm, that is the truth. Then you are accepted. But when you don't come to him with the truth and say, this is the way I am. Oh. You are not telling the truth. Then the truth will come and reveal you and, and expose you and crush you. So God is not actually telling you to be perfect, but to be truthful. Agree with the truth, even when you are not perfect. Agree with the truth. This is what happened. This is the way I am. It's not, it, nobody will go to be perfect. But you have to learn to be truthful, even in your imperfection. Just agree with the truth. Then the truth will lift you. Then the truth will you know, justify you. Then the truth will purify you. Then the truth will pave a way for you. But always stand for the truth, even if it's against your own interest. Don't ever put, try to put the truth under. Yeah. Don't ever. Who has prescribed it? Niasta Novilas. Just to normal, not No, data. No, it's normal. No, just to just to That's why Jesus said, "I am the way. 
the truth, or what did he say? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. It's absolutism. He's not saying maybe, maybe not. He said, I came to testify about the truth. This is absolutism of the truth. John 18.37 said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly. He was about to be put to death for it. And he said, You said it. You said rightly that I am a king. That's what we are accusing him of. For this cause I was born. And for this cause, not to be a king of the earth, but, for the, but it's not for the earth. He said, for this cause I was born. And for this cause I have come into the world. That I should bear witness to the truth. That's the cause. Not to be a king. But to bear witness to the truth. So it, it, that means there's nothing higher than truth. Even Jesus submitted himself to the truth. That's why he said, I'm here to serve the truth. I'm here to witness for the truth. I'm here to witness to the truth. That means that Jesus elevated the truth above himself. That's why the Bible says in Old Testament, in Psalms, that God has exalted his word above his name. Why? Because his word is the truth. The truth has been exalted above everything else. But he said he has exalted his name above his, above his, above, he has exalted his word, his word above his name. What does that mean? He has exalted his principles, his truth, even above you calling upon his name. So truth is more important than prayers. Because his name means calling upon his name. So he has exalted the standard of truth. If you know the truth, you don't even need to pray. If you know the truth, just stand and be committed to the truth. Or even if you are... And your prayers are against the truth. No matter how much prayer that is, it will not work. But if you are standing on the truth, and on the other hand, there are two people... One is standing on the truth, another one is just neglecting the truth and just praying, praying, praying. The one that is a non-believer, that is observing the truth, will be blessed, even if he doesn't believe in God. The truth will work for him, and the one who is a believer, a child of God, that is calling upon the name of God, fasting and prayer, the God will just be passing him by. <laughs> the guy will just be wasting his energy. Why? Because he has exalted his world above all kind of gymnastics in prayer. Above his name. That is the absolutism of the truth. God said he has, he had, he had, he has, you know, whenever God speaks, it is established in heaven. That is the absolutism of the truth. The truth is established forever in heaven. It cannot be altered by man. That is the absolutism of the truth. Another place the Bible says his word, which is the truth, has been passed through the fire seven times, been purified, been tested, so it cannot be questioned. Absolutism of the truth. It's absolute integrity of the truth. So Jesus said, I came to testify to that truth. Jesus also is making himself lower than the truth. The truth is superior, is supreme. All of us must be subjected to the truth. Like, for example, example of Jesus being subjected to the truth. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he didn't want to go to the cross anymore. It was so tough for him, psychologically. And because he was flesh. His fle he said, flesh, I mean, he said, spirit is willing, but the flesh was weak. So he didn't want to do it. because His flesh didn't want to do it. But you know what he said? But thy will be done. Why? What is thy will? Your will is the truth. I have to submit my will. I don't want to do it. I have to submit myself to the integrity of truth. Even Jesus had to be submitted. If he didn't want to do it, there will be many times, and that's an example to all of us, there will be many times when you know the right thing to do, 
But your strength, you don't have the strength to do it. You don't have the energy. You don't have the motivation. Or you don't have just the... Your flesh is just weak. It will happen many times. Even to Jesus it happened. So you are not a superman. Don't say you will not be weak. But admit it. Jesus was truthful. If I were the one, Jesus, I would have liked to be a superman and not admit. <laughs> yes, how, how can I admit publicly that I especially... Especially before all this. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> it, is my, it is your own flesh that could be weak, not my own. But Jesus, even in his weakness, even in his weakness, and we don't like to talk about that. Like, how can you say Jesus had weakness? No, but it's not. Ah, that is it's like a blasphemy. blasphemy. But Jesus didn't hide his own weakness. And in his weakness, he admitted this, that Neo, this thing, Mm -mm. You know they walk. It's not working out for me to be strong. I am weak here. I'm failing here. All of us will face moments of weakness. All of us will face that. Moments of weakness, failures. But be truthful. That's what Jesus did. He admitted it that I'm weak. I'm weak. I failed. Or I not failed. I, mean, I cannot be strong. I'm weak. I, I, mean, is it, I mean, I'm weak. That is truth. That is being in alignment with the truth. But he's also acknowledged the supreme truth over himself. And what is the supreme truth? Your will, not my will. That is the name, that is the word, the will of God that is exalted above his own will. Then when he was on the cross, he said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? What is that? You think God forsook him? No. That was what he was feeling. That is commitment to truth. He, had, he was even saying it openly. Son of God. And the people were laughing. And mocking, ah, but you said you are son of God now. Why didn't he come to deliver you? And then, I'm feeling as if What kind of truth? What kind of... Even if I had been one, I would have just spoken it to myself. <laughs> I don't think I would have pronounced that thing openly. Because they would then think that I'm not authentic. I'm not, I was not Jesus in the first place. But he was not afraid of that because he knew that the truth is that he's Jesus. So the truth will still come to vindicate him. So he doesn't need to lie. He was so committed to the truth. Amazing Jesus. And that's absolutism of the truth. Absolutism of the truth. What else can I say? I've tried to bring it from the side of mathematics, science. I've tried to bring it from the side of justice, judiciary, executive. I've tried to bring it from the side of Jesus, Bible. What else can I say? Spiritual. Yeah, that's the Bible. Spiritual. I've tried to bring it from the side of spiritual. Absolutism of the truth. Do you, are you people getting it? or Are you hearing me? So for truth to be regarded as truth and recognized as truth, it must be absolute. My dear. If it's not absolute, it's not true. It's the same in literature, the same in science, the same in physics, the same in laboratory, the same in life, the same in society. I mean, if I am going, 
if I'm going in the, in, I'm driving, and I said, I see red light in the traffic. Red light is saying stop because other ones are passing in front of you. You said, ah, it's relative. It's not red. For me, it's green. Uh, it will be your last one. <laughs> It will be your last green light. <laughs> that is absolutism of the truth right there. Well, it's the same, but it's also absolute. It doesn't say because you are short or you are red or you are this. It's, I will do an exception for you. That's your last jump, too. <laughs> if you say it's relative, I will just jump, Jerry. Okay, jump, Jerry, now. <laughs> Absolutism of the truth. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about truth. For truth to be truth, it must not be subject it must not be subjective it has to be objective that is tomorrow but before i go let me hear your minds let me hear what you are getting you have the microphone here yes come around and let's hear let's let's hear your thoughts what are you hearing me saying what are you getting from all of this what are you getting? In your own words. I like to hear you who say in your own words because you will be able to say in a way I cannot say. You will be able to communicate in a way that I cannot. So let's hear you out. Wow, guys. Um, what really got my, um, got really deep into my spirit is where you were able to connect the truth with the law and, and legislation of the law the origin of, uh, of the laws of the land and how does truth oppose the society because I feel like you know it even people in the legislation legislative palaces of you know nations to be able to make the appropriate laws that can govern a nation and I think Basically, it talks towards nation governance and creating a, uh, a society that is progressive and that can be uh, successful. Because if you look at the fact that laws keep coming every day, like even in the U.S., they just keep throwing out laws, and laws are based off of the highest bidder. You know, corporations come in and they lobby. Lobbies go in there and, you know, they can buy laws and they go to these senators and lobby and things like that. So the laws that are actually being made for the nation is not the laws that is for everybody. It's actually the laws of the highest bidders. And that's why it creates the inequality in the society when you see the fact that the laws favor some people and doesn't favor some people. So it's not absolute. It has to be absolute, yeah. It's not absolute. If, if it's not absolute, there will be no justice in the society. You know, and because of that, there is no justice. So, automatically connects you to, you know, another of DSA's books uh, that talks about where there is problem, there is um, solution. There is money. There is money. There is, and I would say, I wouldn't say money. I would even say there is prominence. So this can become a platform for us to step on and talk about. Yeah, that's the second one. Prominence, yes. Yes. There's another one on prominence. Yes. yes. That, that is problem, that is prominence. Yes. So. Your shortcut to prominence. To prominence. Your problem, your shortcut to prominence. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, I keep saying, you know, things that come out of this platform is just things of national, international proportion. Because if you open up your spirit and kind of like assess those revelations and think about what part of the society can I apply this knowledge? Now that I understand that how to make a law, a governing law, is the fact that it has to be absolute and it's above everybody. 
So it's not like the president is above the law. And that is why a president can be impeached. A president can be arrested. A president can go to jail. Because that president is also subject to the law. Yep. But what we have is laws that are only meant for some people and not meant for some other people. So as long as the law favors me, I will pass that law. But if, law, if the law is no longer working for me, then I will change it to suit myself. And that is no longer the law. It's now dictatorship or tyranny. It also will hinder the progress of the shine. There is, no, there is no sense of ownership. So now, it is more like a society where others have hijacked your future. In other words, the law is meant to favor them and cause them to succeed and be successful. And now the law is pointing against you, keeping you where you belong. And it, it's now automatically opened a big door for us. Everyone here, we can step on this platform to begin to speak in our nations. We can step on this platform to begin to address issues in the society. We can step on this platform to become leaders that can point the direction, that can point the direction to even the senators, the legislators, the presidents of our nations can listen to us because we have foresight, we have knowledge, and now we to go. And the truth will speak for itself because in a national debate, if you if if what DSA was talking about this evening were to were to be tabled, everybody will know that we all ought to subject to be subject to the truth. The truth speaks to our conscience, the truth speaks to our spirits, and we can all connect to the truth. You know, when we're talking about the you know, uh Queen Nikki was said we we're talking about it the other day that even those who didn't have the Bible knew the truth. Even those who didn't have the Bible can identify the truth and say, that's the truth over there. And that's falsehood. But they didn't have the Bible. So because of that, they were able to walk with God. Now, based off of the fact that the, their conscience was able to give birth to And give birth to the scripture. Because the truth gives birth to his word. Now we are all now under it. And I think, you know, because as, you know, as we were talking about this, you say, you know, in the society where I live, there's a whole lot of injustice. You know, we say, oh, it's the number one country in the world. Wait until you get there. <laughs> Wait until you get there. And now this becomes something that we can begin to address. And when we begin to address this, this immediately, immediately catapults you to the center of the national conversation in the nation where you live. So I feel like everyone sitting here or even watching this broadcast have the opportunity to become leaders. We ourselves need to subject ourselves to the truth. The truth. We can be an authority to the truth because we understand that we can fight the truth. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, even those who make those laws to please themselves end up in the ditch. Because you cannot stand against the truth, but for the truth. So when you make those laws that are not the truth, they will come after you and they will destroy you. And the only reason why the truth is there is to guide all of us to safety and so that we can all have a shared national interest, a shared national destiny. So that at the end of the day, if the country is sabotaged, look at a country like Nigeria. DSA talked about how many billions of dollars that was poured into electricity and it just nobody can trace it because <laughs> there is no truth to uphold the structure that will build that nation. And because there's no power, there's no productivity. And because there's no productivity, destinies are wasting. There's not enough universities. 
And yet, every year graduates are coming out. There is no truth. The, 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 the knowledge that is being shared in the universities is not even the right knowledge. Somebody who goes to university to study computer science, he can't even write one line of code. <laughs> you never have a computer <laughs> to practice. <laughs> Yet we say we have a computer science graduate, a computer science engineer. So it's, it's, it's like a deadlock. So I, I feel like, you know, what, what came out tonight to me, it's, you know, for me, I'm like, this is a book on itself. Just that segment is a book. How national laws are made. The importance of national laws. These are all chapters in that book. And I feel like people in power, people in places of authority can begin to use. And also, this is another thing that will come out of it. Because we now know the truth based off of this teaching. Because we can assess the teachings and now have the light of the truth. We can take a stand in front of the governors. They don't know these things. And because we know them, we have the... the the, you know, knowledge breeds, breeds confidence. Yep. Knowledge breeds confidence to address governors, to address senators, to address presidents. Because if you don't have this knowledge, you are, you are walking in tyranny. And automatically you are wanted, automatically you should be put in jail because you're not qualified for the job. And because we are breaking the code of silence, we cannot but speak. In our nation, all these things, and we go back to our nations and we keep quiet, then we'll come back to the plague of silence. Because everybody can connect to the truth. When we begin to speak these truths in our nations, wherever we are, people will begin to gravitate towards us. This is where leadership starts. Now they will even call and say, Come, what can we do to fix these things? They just want to eat and <laughs> silence everybody because. Their stomach is their belly. They don't have any plan for the future. So now, so many things are working for us or against us. Either way, we go at it. If we, after learning these things, decide to keep quiet, then we've gone back to the plague of silence. Mm. So, and you know, DSA was saying something about, um, not sure which... Um, You understand what I'm saying? So now you've come to school, you know, look at Dr. Louis, you've come, you've spent how many, 10 years or whatever, you know, studying. And then you go back only to be governed by an ignoramus. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? With all the knowledge you have, only to keep quiet for an unqualified doctor to tell you and write the policies of medicine of your nation and you keep quiet and those policies are, will, will ruin lives people will die because they don't understand where that knowledge came from that you are operating under because of the exposure to the truth this is by far one of the biggest <laughs> you know sometimes you know when DSA is teaching I'm like okay what is he going to talk about but then he opens another chapter like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like a tsunami of knowledge that we can all relate with, we can all connect with, and can all go home with. You know? So thank you, DSA. This is just... Wow. Tomorrow we'll continue. <laughs> well, any other person wants to comment? Come. Josephine. I got you today. Yes, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, what really hit home was when he said that um, truth is absolute and it sets the standard. So in my understanding... Standard. Oh, yes. how my country needs standards. <laughs> and uh, I'm in the... That's why you can buy milk that is good in one shop and is bad in another one. Yes. That's why you can buy bread. It's not the same because they don't require standard from everybody. Yes. So somebody puts this in the, in the yeast in the bread, somebody doesn't put it on. So you go to buy medicine, this one has this, this one doesn't. This one kills you, this one heals you. Mm. No standard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
um, in the construction industry, um, you know, when you, you um, construct or maybe you place a door and you have to know the right size of a door. So I know the size of a door using centimeters is like two meters by 813 millimeters centimeters. So uh, what happened is that the actual door cannot be the same size as the frame. Should you miss a measurement, um, you know, it can work at times, even if it's by one, milli one millimeter or one centimeter, it can work for some time. But with use and with the elements of weather or whatever, after some time, that door will not close, will not work properly, and you might need to have to replace it. And what hit home for me was that um, often, even in, in things that we don't see, right, we can cut corners. And then um, it, on the face of it, it looks fine because it works for the season. But with time and the, you know, like the trials of life, it will be exposed. So what hit home for me was that you know, I should not just accept you know, partial truth. I should always ask myself, you know, when something is thrown at me, I should always ask myself, what is the standard? What is the truth about this thing? Because of, even if for some time it might work, will it be able to stand the test of time? What is the absolute truth on this thing? And it really hit home because of, um, you know, us education system back home in South Africa is in a state where, you know, people are questioning. People, um, you know, the pass, the pass mark of uh, students who are supposed to go to university is so low. You can pass um, your high school at 30%. You know, if you, you get 30%, you pass in South Africa. And it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a serious problem because now what we have is that the system, even the universities and, you know, the students cannot perform because of that. amazing because it really helped me to be able to understand that if you don't know the truth you cannot set the right standards thank you thank you anybody who is next yep. um, thanks pastor Sunday uh, I think one of the biggest things when you explain the abs absolutism of the truth is a standard understand that things are held to a certain standard and even just the way business is done is that if I want to have the same results as let's say somebody who's successful in business then I have to incorporate the same standard that they that they held themselves to so holding holding myself to a certain standard of truth which is absolute means that I can replicate somebody else's results Absolutely. Um, and then you know one of the parables that comes to mind is the man who built his house on the rock which is the truth and you know it's absolute and the guy who built his house on sand which is relative um, so that when the stores came when problems come mm -hmm. clearly the person who built it on truth which was absolute it sustained it and so I just you know doing some self-reflection of what am I building my life on what am I building my future marriage on it has to be built on the truth no matter what and so thank you for that that's for sure that is, you know, that is why God always is th talking about marriage. That's why God discourages fornication. Now, what is fornication? Fornication is if I'm dating somebody, Queen uh, Mkiru, people know that I will not date you. <laughs> she, was, she was my. Uh, yeah, so let's say I'm dating somebody. What does that mean? If I am dating my, we love each other, my fiance, and we begin to live together, right? Now, that's not according to the truth because we are not married yet. When we marry, that is truth. But I'm not married, but we are dating and we are, and we are all focused on sex, intimacy, you know, just living. If I'm doing that, you know what that does? Because it's not the truth. What that does is that I'm all taken over and taken over by a beauty, by emotions, hormones. And that emotion is driving me and driving her. Whereas, no, no table. Okay, that is like I am building walls without building foundation. 
So I'm building walls because we are all excited, we are all passionate among each other. But what that is doing is that I am being carried away. What is emotion like that? I'm being carried away by fulfilling my passion, desires. She is fulfilling our passion, desire. So I'm not actually seeing what I'm supposed to be seeing. But on the other hand, if I go the Bible way, the Bible way is the truth way. What is that? What does that mean? It means we are not getting passionate with each other. We are not getting sexual. We are not having anything. We are not giving room to passion and to emotions. So why I'm reflect, you know, re- refraining myself from being carried away by passion, I'm able to see her for who she is. See her responses. See my responses. I'm able to lay the foundation of patience. Forgiveness. I'm able to see her. She's able to see me. I'm able to see what I like, what I don't like. What we, I'm, I'm putting foundations of long-suffering. By refraining, I'm suffering long. Foundation. I'm building foundation of patience. By refraining, I'm developing patience. I'm building foundation of patience. Because in marriage, I will need it. Those things will sustain us. Then I'm building foundation of understanding. Because when I I become passionate, there is no time to study her and get to know who she is or understand her. I'm just being carried away by the emotions. So I don't even see, seek understanding. That is why when we now get together and we are married, I begin to discover, oh, was she like that? Because I was blinded. That's why people said love is blind. I was blinded by the passion. I gave passion. When you give passion the way, then you don't, the things that were supposed to sustain you, you didn't build it. That's what courtship is for. Courtship is that period of time when you lay the foundation for the values, for the truth, that will let that sustain you when the passions are gone. <laughs> True. So, now let, let, let now say I neglect, you know, all those patience, long suffering, you know, understanding, you know, what she likes, what she doesn't like, forgiveness, all those foundations I like, we are just passionate. <laughs> just passionate. <laughs> So that will take me into marriage. That will take me into marriage. But when I get into marriage, I will discover that I don't have the patience because I didn't build it. I, didn't, I don't have the long safe. So I didn't build it. I didn't have the forgiveness. I didn't build it. I didn't have the... I didn't even see her because I didn't have time. I was seeing my passion, fulfilling my desires. I didn't even see that she was like this or she had these weaknesses or she was... She, was, she reacts like this. I didn't even notice because we were all... So truth will come. That's why nobody can do anything against the truth. Yeah. Only for the truth. So when you now begin to live together, that is true coming out. Mm. <laughs> 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 Who was coming? Who is the next one? <laughs> you want to do it? Okay, come. You are the next one. You come, you come and stand. Let, let, the, let the lady come first. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I had a thought about humanism because nowadays uh, societies in many countries are built on humanism. And uh, humanism also declares that everyone is equal. And they say that. But then on the ha- other hand, uh, humanism uh, denies it at the same time when they say that... Um, well, a portion is okay. They are because not that is relativism. Yes, <coughs> because they are saying that the child there isn't equal. They are not giving the right to live to the child. And um, I, I believe that some of us are called to create laws and, Amen. and to fix laws Amen. to the right way. And I'm not a proper person to do that, but I had an idea. And uh, I started to think that if we imagine any law that there is in society, and then we imagine that law, how would it work in heaven? 
<laughs> Everything has to start from heaven. Yeah. If I take a law of an abortion, and then I start to think, would it work there? Would God allow it to happen? No. So we know it's not the will of God. Because the word of God says that do not kill. It's that simple. And also I had a thought that uh, these standards, really, they create, um, what did I say? Quality. Standards, standards yes. create quality. Quality, Be beautiful, uh, that's very good. I, because I when, that, when yeah. Jesus was on the earth, this is a, a very funny revelation, but uh, when the body of Jesus was on the earth, when he was living, his body was on the earth. So the will of God was fulfilled through his body. Yes. What about now? Ooh. <laughs> that is like so, somehow, childish revelation. <laughs> but anyway, and when Jesus also gave standards to us, when he said uh, that if you don't take your cross, if you don't follow me, you cannot be my disciple. So he gave a standard to a disciple. So you can choose. The word of God says you can choose today, life or death. It's you choosing. God is not like telling you. He has given you the free will because he is love. So we are really like able to choose. And these are a couple of thoughts that I have. Beautiful. Somebody was asking in the comment. I just went through the comment and somebody was telling me that, oh, I fell under the anointing and I know it's real. I don't say it's not real. Though. <laughs> I'm just saying of the excessiveness of what people are doing. I have fallen under the anointing too before and, uh, and I've prayed for people they have fallen under the anointing. It's just the reaction of body. It's just a, the reaction of a human body to the power of God. But it doesn't mean that that is authenticity. It doesn't give you authenticity. It's not the truth. You know, like I, we had already discussed that, things that work doesn't mean that this is the truth. The truth is that that same person with the anointing will go to the restaurant and nobody will fall. And if it's not absolute, that anointing is not always falling, doesn't authenticate anointing. You know, that's what he's saying, that it is not about falling. Why is it that he goes to sleep with his wife? And his wife he's living with his wife every day, passing by him every day, and she's not always sleeping. I mean, lying down. How is she cooking? <laughs> if they are living in the same house, how is she cooking? Hey, is she not falling down in the kitchen nowhere? Because it's not about the falling. Forget about it. Don't, no, don't major on minors. That's what I'm trying to say. That falling and thinner fall, follow, no follow, is minor. That is the idea. You know, so Christians, are, they are so painful. It's so painful to them to, you know, to, to, to accept that whatever they have come to us to love and to practice all this while might not really be the whole thing about Christianity. So we are fighting all we can fight to, 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 yeah, to stand our ground. Just stand for the side of truth. Experience is not true though. So. Thanks, Pastor. Um, I think talking about falling, um, many of us going to meetings at different points in time, we always think that we, something was wrong with us when the rest of the people were falling and, and we were not falling. So we thought that maybe, I think Mayowa was telling a very funny story the other day that because everybody fell and she was, you can just imagine that picture. Everybody fell and you are just the only one standing. So they think that you must have excessive negative power not to, not to have fallen. Um, thanks, Pastor, for this teaching tonight. Very, very, very profound. Truth is absolute. I think that if we have to live by this truth alone, if we have to identify with this understanding of this teaching tonight, many of us may have to go back to the foundation of our Christian faith. Because what brought us to Christ in the first place was God was presented to us as a trickster, as somebody who will give us that, who will help us beat the rules. So if you believe God, then he will give you the advantage. So that is, on, on such is the concept of all this massive um, and all this kind of thing. That Because we don't 
Students don't want to read because they think they have God. So they want to use God as the advantage in that kind of situation. You know, Christians want to cheat or they want to, they don't want to measure to the standard. So they want to, because I think since I have God, so let me not, let me just cut corners and all that. But if the truth is absolute, then a lot of Christians are in trouble because this is bad news for them already. If the truth is absolute, then that means God will not be helping you out of to cut corners. God will not be helping you out of, out of situations. God will not be helping you out of business deals that are not excellent, yeah. out of contracts that are not the best. You, you cannot know. use the name of God. You can't right? use the name of God. It's, so I, it's bad news for... And the truth will still come to vindicate you. Yes, yes. That is justice. I think the international symbol for justice has majorly three elements. You see that on the left, he has a balance, like a scale, with which he measures. On the right, he has a sword with which he administers justice. And on his face, is, you see the cloth. He, there is always a cloth that is around the face that is, with which is blinded. So he doesn't see. You know? So that means it doesn't matter who you are. I'm going to weigh you, and I'm going to judge you. So if we live by this... Nah, this symbol of truth. The symbol of truth. So if we have to identify with this tonight, all of us can go uh, from here tonight and determine that... I am going to align my life, my work, everything will be with the standard. I'm going to become the standard of truth. And one of the things I learned from pastor is that, you see, the degree to which you align yourself to truth is the degree of your excellence. Is the, that is why pastor emphasizes again and again to us about details, about everything, everything matters. You know? So it, when you align yourself to details, you will not only excel, you will not only have created a standard that everybody looks forward to you yourself you'd have become the standard it's like in my country people say ah he tried no he tried now mm. it's not about trying no <laughs> it's about aligning yourself with the truth <laughs> yeah. yes some people just oh he, he made attempt in my country everybody just want to give themselves credit that okay he has tried give him the credit no you've not standard yes yes that's why everybody is mediocre yes so <laughs> if we will live to align ourselves with the truth then you would be you will not just be setting paces you will not just be creating standards you become the standard you become the masterpiece you become the 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 representation yes yeah, the reference point the reference point for excellence people can look at you and they can say is the epitome is the embodiment of standard and that is really what I, I i'm going to live for i want to become the embodiment i want people to see what i do i want to be the standard for my works for what i do when, when I was in medical school, usually when we write tests, it's always about who scored the highest. It doesn't matter what you score. Even the, usually if the pass mark was 50 and the highest was 46 and you score 45, you think I'm good because after all, the highest, the person who scored the highest was 46, even though none of us passed. It wasn't about who passed. It's always about <laughs> who scored. But the truth is that all of us failed. But nobody wants about the truth. It's always about the, the reference point for, you know, the nearest failure. And that's what the society has become, unfortunately, for Africa. That is the basis of mediocrity. Of mediocrity. So everybody just always wants to, you know, that after all, you didn't do it's it. Not it's not worse than you. It's not worse. My mind is not the worst case. After all, mine is not, you know, consolation. But the truth has come for us tonight that if what is truth must be total, must be 100%. Absolutely. It must be absolute. Thank you. <laughs> Even you, Julie, Julie got up tonight. Okay. The truth um, got to you tonight. I just, I want to start by saying that um, I just got so much assurance and so much strength into never, never, ever lower my standards especially as a woman, to never, never lower my standards. And I just want to encourage every other woman out there, you know, to never, never lower their standards. Because if you build your relationships on truth, it is going to sustain you in the end, you know. You, you don't have to worry about this anymore when, once you're in a relationship because you know for sure that you have been waiting based on truth, you know, that you have lived a life based on truth. And 
the other thing I want to say is that I realize and how... women keep on lowering their standards. They keep on compromising. Yeah. Okay, maybe we'll change later. Yeah, okay, we'll understand later. Oh, maybe I will be able to explain to him. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, maybe... No, nobody is perfect. Maybe you worry about if I don't find another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe the last bus. <laughs> And the good thing is also, if we live by, you know, the standard of truth, we lead, we're living by example. So even those who don't live by the truth, even, you know, men who don't live by the truth, looking at just the way you live your life based on that standard of truth, it is going to help them. It's going to teach them, you know. And the other thing that I realized is that <laughs> we're so lazy. We're just so very lazy because truth... <laughs> Truth is costly, you know. Yeah. Truth uh -huh. requires sacrifice, and it requires it requires um, effort. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to put all of this into truth because that is the standard that we have to pay. But at the same time, this is so ironic that I found is that we look for respect, you know, mm -hmm. but we don't put truth above us. Yeah. So we don't obviously we don't get respect. Just like the story that Pastor was. Uh, telling about the stairs like the person looks for respect and says oh come into my beautiful house but if you don't build it based on truth how are you going to get the respect that you're seeking or if you if you want to be successful or you want to be I don't know you 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 want people to look up to you you want people to listen to you but you don't put the truth above above yourself you're not gonna get it so that's just what I, I realized, that it is very ironic, and it saddens me, because especially when I look at Africa, you know, we are all screaming and, and making noise, but we don't abide by this very absolute because and teachers, high standard. Pastors, pastors emphasize prayers, experiences, yeah. instead of uh, emphasizing truth yeah. and standards. So everything we want, really, is in this simple principle that we just have to put the truth above ourselves. So, yeah, that's what I learned today. Supremacy of the truth, absolutism of the truth. Wow. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> this is really an eye-opener. Now, what I want to say here is I don't want us to view this through the spectacles of uh, religiosity because... The truth is that God or there is no pastor, there is no bishop, and there is no even Akpop, if there is anything like that, <laughs> that is above the, the truth. truth. Yes. But what we notice in our churches today is that Men of God are being raised above, yes, are above the, the truth. truth. Yes. If even God himself submits to the truth, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> if Jesus himself could submit to the truth, <laughs> who are you? We make our members worship us more than God. Now, I just want to put this across. What made God to kick the devil? He was an angel, of course. But he wanted to he exalt himself. He yes. did not abide by the truth. And that's why he fell. But Very today good. we are repeating the same routine. Ooh. We are practicing the same thing God My is God. kicking against. And we expect something different. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, why you is... You know there have been, there have been uh, this, you know, this saying in churches. Uh, it is only God that will judge him. So only God. So don't talk the truth. Don't call. Only judge. You know, God knows. It is God that called him. So God knows. God will deal with him. So you just, you just close your eyes to the truth. Declare the truth. You are very right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I posted something the other day. I said, uh, it is not, it is actually not, uh, it is actually the church that builds the society. It is not the society that builds the church. <laughs> and if we think our men of God are above the truth, we don't have the right to castigate politicians. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. 
we don't have the right to castigate politicians because the truth is the government lies on the shoulders of jesus and as men of God, we are the immediate representatives of Jesus on earth. Right. That is to say, the examples that will be lived or practicalized in our environments must be tapped from the church. So if we exhort ourselves and we don't respect the rules, or we don't respect principles, or we don't respect the truth, we don't expect those in the society to respect what we are telling them because we are going against the same thing we are talking about. And now we make God a liar. But the Bible says, let all men be liars and let God be true. Yeah. Now, I want to bring this again to a more practical example, looking at my country. Pastor, when you were talking, this touched me so much because I realized that in Cameroon right now, what is going on? We find leaders unleashing the military on the same people they were supposed to be protecting. Ooh. They beat people the molest people, the rape girls, and they kill, go cut free. People. They kill people. And these are the same people who sit and write laws that they don't respect. So they don't respect the truth. And that is exactly what you were saying. So there is no equality of the law. The, where, where politicians have something that protects them like a canopy. So they, they, there, is, there is a protection or a shield against the truth. Then who is supposed to <laughs> not be truth. shielded? <laughs> and this is what is pulling Africa backward. And just like uh, Dr. Success said, it is something that, first of all, we have to internalize it. We have to be able to make it practical with our own lives first before we can go out and implement yeah. it. Thank you so much. I did, Peter. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Today I have been vindicated that I did not take alcohol when I was asking my pastor one question. <laughs> So the question was, I asked my pastor, how did our Jew sleep with the wife if nobody can come near him? You have to fall. <laughs> <No. laughs> so, because of so much anointing. So, no, no. <laughs> so, so he said that he asked me if I have been taking alcohol. <laughs> Why you ask that question? Why? That question is only coming from alcohol. <laughs> so, so today, I have been vindicated that uh, my thoughts and my question were, were not wrong, actually. Today, today is digging deep. This, this truth, absolute, absolutism of the truth, is the real digging deep, that we are digging deep into the word of God. Uh, because the religion that we have in Nigeria and in Africa has, has been able to have succeeded in making people so lazy. When a farmer goes to, to sow his or her seed, he doesn't pray. Mm -hmm. The seed just germinates because of the truth. Beautiful. It's, God has put truth in nature. God has put truth in nature. So you see some believers, they want to do something. Papa, please lay hand on me. Ah, when, when the seed is not asking land to lay hand on it, <laughs> the seed is germinating by itself in the soil. No need for any hand to be laid on it. And you are coming, a human being that is higher than the seed and higher than the soil. And another truth <laughs> is that God created everybody equal. I can't stand and witness the, the inequality that is going on in Nigeria and in Africa, in which the men of God are so high. Yes, we, don't even, we don't even have ladder to, to bring them back. <laughs> We need, and they become so spiritual. And my question is, when will they come back to physical? So that we, <laughs> when will they come to visit us? Physical. 
<laughs> and my question I used to question myself is whether sometimes they no 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 whether they are, they have been raptured and, and they appeared again but the truth today has been able to vindicate my thoughts that my thoughts were, were not wrong because all these people are mere men just like me and you that nobody is greater than you and nobody i'm not greater than anybody else irrespective of any pope any archbishop or any holy thou reverend pastor is not bigger than anybody god created everybody equal. in his own image yeah. equal so the truth has come today that you should not subject yourself to some people maybe you think that you cannot do anything you go and kneel down for somebody to, to pray for you have god in you there is god inside of you yes there is god inside of you and when you do that you are dethroning god yes that wow. is in you that is wrong that is wrong. you have to believe that there is god in you and that is the truth and another another thing that got me is that is that without truth nothing can be sustained without truth society cannot be sustained without truth nothing absolutely nothing even the whole world exists and is sustained by the truth and that is why every one of us we cannot do anything against the truth only for the truth and for the truth the last thing I want to say is that the truth is that every one of us, we have a purpose that God sent us to this earth to come and accomplish. And that is absolute truth. We cannot negotiate. We cannot do without it. Everybody, every one of us, we have been sent, we have been equipped, we have been anointed, we have been given everything we need the resources that we need, the potential that we need is in us to accomplish what we have been sent to come and accomplish. Very good, very good. So, I can understand people who might find this difficult to swallow immediately, especially if they are coming to the platform for the first time. Can you imagine? In fact, it, it does, it's not just this truth. Any truth that you hear Pastor Sunday preach for the first time, if you are not prepared, you are in crisis. So people who are commenting and uh, they are, you know, challenging some things, you know, you can just understand them because they are coming for the first time. So they still need to take a long journey yeah, detoxification has to take place. <laughs> Detox. And, uh, but remember that for anything to be true or to say it's truth, it might be true, but it's not truth. So if something is truth, it must be absolute. If it's not absolute in everywhere, every condition, all places, apply to everybody the same, then it's not true. And if it's not universal, it's not truth. Tomorrow, we will talk about the objectivity of truth. Truth must be objective, but never subjective. Good, good night. <laughs>